Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. Today, we're looking at Dominion Zephon from Games Workshop's recent Black Library Week releases. I was really excited to pick this guy up for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's a really cool Blood Angels character sculpt, and secondly, it'll be my first ever Horus Heresy character that I've ever painted. I'm going to be doing this as a box to battlefield tutorial, so I'll show you everything all the way from unboxing up to getting him fully painted, and hopefully show you some nice glamour shots at the end. There's a load to cover in this video, so let's get started. A good place to begin is who the hell is Dominion Zephon? A member of the ill-fated Crusader host on Terra, Dominion Zephon was removed from frontline service after losing three of his limbs to a Xenos blade. Unable to effectively wield a bolter or wield his power sword, the Spiritum Sanguis, due to his extensive injuries and his malfunctioning cybernetics, he was eventually restored to working order by Arkan Land. That's the same Arkan Land as in the Land Raider, which he helped to rediscover. He liked putting his name on things, so I guess Dominion Zephon is lucky that he's not wandering around on a land leg or holding his sword with land arms. Anyhow, let's get on with unboxing this miniature. This is my very first unboxing on the channel, and so, as such, I completely botch it. I forget to take off enough of the plastic at the top, and then I just kind of have to wrench it out of the way. But hopefully you'll forgive me, and I'll hopefully get better with time. On the back, you can see we've got the Citadel painting guide, but we're not going to be using those exact colours. We're going to be kind of going our own way and giving it a bit of an experiment. Let's open it up and get our first look at the sprues. In here, we've got the base, which is still lingering around in the box. We've got our instruction booklet and our actual sprues. I'm surprised at how many pieces there are in this actual sprue. It's definitely not an easy model to build, as we'll see later. But we can see here we've got all his cybernetic augmentations and his giant two-handed power sword. The backpack is also impressively large so that he can jump right into the fray. Okay, let's get on to building. First things first, it's a good idea to have a good look over the instructions so that there isn't anything that surprises you later on down the line. I'm going to start off with the torso. I tend to like to go panel by panel, clipping out all the parts I need and then also cleaning them up so that they're ready to be stuck together. This is just a moment of me trying to decipher Games Workshop's insane numbering system. And if you're new to Hobby Snips, I'd highly recommend getting some. I just use a cheap pair I got off Amazon at probably two or three quid. Make sure that you put the flat side of the snippers flush against the piece that you're cutting out and then press down hard to remove it from the sprue. The closer you can get into your model, then the less flash you'll have to clean up later. Just make sure that you're not trimming off any bits of detail with the ends of the clippers. Once I've got my parts off the sprue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hobby knife and I'm going to shave off those excess bits. So be careful doing this because hobby knives can be very sharp. While you can call it battle damage on your plastic minis, you can't call it battle damage on your thumbs. Pull towards you and try and keep the flat of the knife coming towards you so that you don't end up cutting yourself. So with the parts all snipped out and cleaned up, they're ready to be put together. I always recommend dry fitting your parts. This just means putting them together without glue, just to make sure that you're putting everything in the right place. Now that I'm happy with my fit, I'm gonna stick them together. For this, I'm gonna use my Citadel plastic glue, so I'll take off the cap. And, oh, it hasn't got the little metal bit. No problem. I actually have some Revel plastic cement that I can use instead. So let's take this out. Oh, that's stuck in the cap as well. Fortunately, I do have a spare, and I prefer applying it with these little nozzles, so they do tend to get stuck in the lids. I really think they should adjust their design on these. So let's grab my third and final thing of plastic glue. Is it stuck in the lid? Nope, we're all good to go this time. With a bit of twisting, I can get it out of there. Now, we're only going to apply a small dab of glue on here, as it's going to be melting the plastic together, and we don't want to be obscuring any details or melting anything that shouldn't be melted. Apply a small dab, and then push the parts together gently. You'll then see I use my finger to wipe off any excess glue that may have squeezed out around the edges. With that, let's do the same for the rest of the pieces of the model, pausing only to roleplay Dominion Zephon's malfunctioning cybernetics. 
Oh, past Ollie doesn't seem to like my terrible joke. Let's move on quickly before we upset him. When it comes to this shoulder pad, it actually comes in two pieces. When I stuck them together, I realized there was quite a big gap between them. What I did is I got a bit of extra plastic cement and a toothpick. I used this to kind of work the plastic cement inside of the gap, filling it in. Once I was happy with the effect I'd got with the toothpick, I went back over with my hobby knife just to smooth it out. I actually used a toothpick again here, this time to push a very small piece into the backpack. You never know what useful tools you're going to find lying around at home. And with the head inserted into its slot, that's our Dominion Zephon all built. Now we all love a bit of a beaky, so here is Dominion Zephon stood next to the last beaky that I painted. This guy is from the Start Collecting Blood Angels box, that was the first box I got when I got back into 40k in 2017. Let's move on to painting. I'm going to be doing something a little bit experimental here and priming the model with a metallic colour through my airbrush. With hindsight, I'd probably complete this stage, take my photos and then prime the whole model black. But I needed to prime it and it seemed as good a colour as any. And using a metallic paint is going to help show up where all the highlights and where all the light sources are going to be coming from so that when we come to paint those in a bit later on, we know whereabouts to put our lightest colours. The airbrush is another one of those things I'd really love to make a full length video on. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in or if you've got an airbrush yourself and what you use it for. Now this video isn't intended as an in-depth painting guide. I'm gonna walk you through the overview of the steps that I took. For the red, I'm gonna use a very similar technique to what I used in my Assault Intercessor video, which you can see right here. I'm starting from corn red, and as the armor is the main color of this model, what I'm gonna be doing is just kind of going over everything with this corn red. I'm not being too careful, just slapping it on. We're then gonna do our next layer, Mephiston Red, highlighting up, adding in layers of paint. We'll go over this with Evil Sun Scarlet, and then start mixing in a little bit of yellow to highlight up to the next stage. After painting the red armor, I was really happy with how he was coming along. Now it was time to start on non-metallic metal. Unfortunately, I realized quite quickly that I'd set myself a task that was a little beyond what I was up to that evening. I'll let Painting Ollie explain it in his own words. Sometimes it's important to know your limits. I've been doing the black details for almost an hour. I'm happy with how he's coming along, but I'm also tired. My back hurts, my eyes hurt. I'll come back to this guy in a bit. So instead of letting it get me down, what I decided to do was to block in all of the colors black so that I'd have something to work on in the next session and then take a bit of a break. I realized the magnitude of the task ahead of me and I almost put myself off doing the model entirely. This video title could have been how to paint half a character model and then give up. Fortunately, I'm glad that I decided to power through. As you'll see at the end, the effect that I got is really cool and I'm really happy with it. I decided to start on the non-metallic silver because I had a pretty good recipe that I wanted to use. Um, I found a couple of guides and one of the things that really started putting me off was that I was trying to follow a guide that was much too complex from Angel Heraldes. Wonderful painter, amazing tutorials, unfortunately a little beyond my skill level at the moment. I found a lovely video from Vince Vincirella where he kind of broke down a non-metallic metal steel color and I kind of adapted that and simplified it a bit for my usage. Links to any of the videos that I'm kind of talking about here will be in the description down below. Once I'd kind of changed up my style that I was going to be doing my non-metallic metal, I could immediately see a difference in how I was painting. I was going back and forth to the palette, grabbing my paints and kind of slapping them on the model and then slowly blending them together. Long story short, I was back to having fun painting this model. It's very easy in this hobby to try something challenging and let yourself get down if you don't achieve it first time. Always remember that practice makes perfect and you don't have to push yourself into a challenge on every single model that you paint. And if you're not having fun, just stop or revert back to an easier technique. They're your models at the end of the day and you'll be happier to have them painted than not. I know I am. All I would say is give it a go. There's loads of tutorials online for all kinds of techniques in miniature painting. Some of them will be above your skill level and that's absolutely fine because we all have to start somewhere and hopefully you can grow in experience like I did across the course of this project. 
Again, with painting the gold, I followed a very similar kind of mentality to what I did on my steel. There are some really nice little details you can paint with the gold. Things like the little studs on his shoulder pads are really good for kind of getting your practice in. If I were to give you one tip from what I learned about painting non-metallic metal on this project, it would be this. Make sure you highlight up to pure white or nearly pure white on the edges of the metal. This will really help sell the metallic effect, especially if you have the white next to very dark shadows. The closer those shadows are, the more reflective your surface is going to look. After struggling through my non-metallic metal, I was finished. I went back in, filled in a few final details like the gems. With all of that finished, I gave my guy a lava base, tutorial incoming in the future, I promise, and I called him done. And so it's time for the reveal of the rearmed, reinvigorated Dominion Zephon. So this model was a lot of fun to build and paint, and I'm so glad that I've managed to capture it all on video, as I'm really pleased with the final result. If you enjoyed my paint job, let me know down in the comments below, click the subscribe button if you want to see some more, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I will see you next time. Should we do just a shot of vodka on camera or something? I mean, just... <laughs> I, would, I, I wish I could turn into how to drink. <laughs>